Y'all in Acts 19? And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, hallelujah, came to Ephesus and finding certain, somebody say certain, disciples. They were certain that they were disciples. They were certainly followers, amen, of John the Baptist, hallelujah, hallelujah, but they weren't certain about where they are, their place, and their walk with God. Isn't it a shame to come to church, hear the word, hear the preaching, and not know where you are, and not know your place in God. He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost? Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Since you believe. These are disciples now. These are followers. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Hmm. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I pray to the Father that he'll send you another comforter. He said, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. How can you not know about the Holy Ghost? Even if you follow John, John baptized Jesus, and the Spirit came on him like a dove and said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. How can you not know what the Spirit of God is? We don't do that at my church. We don't believe in all that emotionalism. It don't take all that. How many know it takes that answer? It takes whatever it takes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ain't got to jump no pews and run down no aisles. No chill. Had to run up this fire, but you know you've been born again. I've seen people go down to the altar and lift their hands like this, get up and walk back into their seat. And I'm looking at them like this, didn't break a sweat. Tom, they saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see them fall all over the floor. See this one dude like he worked for the WWF? How to do it? He was shaking the altar. He was shaking and caught the pull the altar. I was a deacon. I said, I'm going to fix that, man. You need to back up, bro. Back up a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will ask yourself I'm seeing me. Now back up. Hallelujah. I've seen people get saved all kinds of ways. And I cannot deny them receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. I see them travail, and those are the ones they got something at home. Amen. How do they got something on the side? Amen. They holding on to. And you see them travail. Amen. How do they betwixt in between? Hallelujah. How, they love Jesus. They want him. They just not willing to let go of some stuff. Hallelujah. 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 And if they just let it go for a minute and just focus on the cross of Calvary, yeah. they'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So it's not up to us whether they receive or not. Because our names are written above. Revelation 20 tells us, amen, whoever name, whosoever name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So we don't determine who's saved and who's, who's not saved. We determine, amen, hallelujah. It's our job is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to spread the good news. And pass it out of the people we come up on, the truth we've heard, the great word and messages we've heard preached. Down through the years, I never thought we needed the truth more today yeah. than ever. Right. It's a whole lot of foolishness and a whole lot of folly out there. Mm. You, got, you got disciples of erroneous teachers that are projecting that erroneous word and gospel more fervently than those who believe. Yes. Yes. I ain't talking about your seats, but I'm saying we're too comfortable. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We got too comfortable. When we were when we was getting lynched and dogs were chasing after us, we were going further than the Lord. We were coming up with songs and negro spirituals. We were coming up with all kinds of things to give God praise when we had oppression. Yeah. I ain't said it left. But it's not to the degree that our mothers and I mean, just because somebody tell you they're not gonna serve you, you didn't come up under what your grandmother came up. That's right. We being oppressed. They profiled. Amen. Hallelujah. They didn't profile them back. They didn't profile your grandma. Hallelujah. Amen. They arrested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They lynched. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was no profiling. There was no court. Hallelujah. On what they went through. So it is important for all of us as believers to know who we are. As believers in Christ Jesus. We have to know who we follow. A disciple is a disciplined follower. Otherwise, you just wanted to cry. Yeah. 
You fare well. Hallelujah. You have fair weather friends. You have fair weather saints. You have fair weather believers. As long as everything is going well, they're with you. As long as you don't tell them what to do. And the number one thing, as long as you don't give somebody else the job that they are qualified to do, they're fair weather. But unless you give it to somebody who has the same qualification, yeah. but you can't choose everybody to do it. You have to select somebody to do it, not everybody. And the minute you say somebody, you alienate everybody else. So out of the 12, you pick one, and you got 11 folk mad at you. Hallelujah. 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 Because I'm not a disciplined follower of you. Can I help, can I help Pastor Vic? Can I help me out about it? It's our first Sunday in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he, the, the leadership has to make the decisions. Hear from God. Lay before God. Lament over decisions that you make. Because you and y'all have rookies. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been through this. And so when you see things, you see things need to be done, and you hear the Lord, and the Lord tell you to do it, amen, hallelujah, somebody will tell you what you should or should not have done. I call the church folk, I don't want to talk about it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the church folk tell you what to do. Amen, follow us, ask what do we need to do. How can I help the church? How can I help the ministry? How can I help it grow? Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the minute you select, amen, you have negated somebody and the, and the feelings come into play. Because they're not followers of you. Because they'll tell you, I, God said, or I hear from God. And God said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So I don't have to hear you what you said. Because God is my God. He's my judge. Hallelujah. God is over me. You're not my father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He is my father. He is my leader. So if that person is right and what you thought was right and the teachings that you thought was right and your perception is correct, then how is Paul finding you confused? How are we being found outside of the will of God and out of the word of God? And not knowing whether there's so much as heard, whether there be any Holy Ghost. We got people in church 52 Sundays out of the year, but they're confused. You got pastors, you got leaders, you got preachers that are confused. We don't know our calling. We don't know our place in God. We can't be disciples. We can't have disciples if we weren't disciples. If you didn't sit under Bishop Ball, you couldn't leave. If I didn't sit and listen to Bishop Roberts, I couldn't leave. All I could do is tell me what they tell me to do at, at, at the seminary, amen, at the academy, what the book tells me. Because I don't have any OJT preaching. I have no on-the-job training. I have no prerequisite of following my pastor. The, the book would tell me, go this way. And do this, set up this. Organize this. My pastor tells me, Stop right here. And stop right here. Yeah. Everything else is a minefield. But I know where he stepped is safe. Yeah. And so I step where he stepped. And I'm safe. And so when you see my footprints, you follow them. Mm -hmm. But you think they're mine. But they're not mine. They're Bishop Roberts because I follow his. Yeah. And he follows Small and Williams. And he followed R.C. Lawson's. They followed in their footsteps. And there was safety in the, in the journey because I'm not leaning to my own understanding. I'm following God. I'm following his teachings. I'm following the man of God as he leads me on the journey. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So they find these disciples of John. And they said, we don't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. The whole reason Jesus was here to set up the religious order, to set, reset the church, to reboot everything. Back to God, not to man. 
hallelujah, and to bring things back into an woman with God, but you missed that old thing. You missed Jesus himself. Remind you, they was following John, the forerunner of Jesus. Jesus had come and gone when they meet Paul. Paul was set up a, 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 a year after the ascension. Paul was called into the ministry. He met him on the, on the road of Damascus a year after Jesus was caught up in the sky. So they had all this time Jesus was reading a ministry four or five years in a ministry that wasn't connected hallelujah, to the divine power of God. Because he was a forerunner. Let's get into that just a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying, Unto the people that they should believe on him or should come after him. Hallelujah. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, somebody said, Hear this. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on upon them, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost, somebody said Holy Ghost, hallelujah. came on them, and they spake with tongues, and prophesied, and all men were about twelve, representing the twelve tribes, representing the original twelve of Jesus' disciples, hallelujah. God does things in order. He does things by his divine will and order, hallelujah. In this walk, you're going to find people that are not walking with you. In this walk, you're going to find people that are not following you. The late, great Bishop Smalley Williams, if you think you're leading, amen, you have nobody following you. You are not leading, you're just taking a walk. Hallelujah, that's what he would say. Hallelujah, amen, that's what he used to say. Amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. So even John had some following him, but not going forward, amen, in the production of his ministry. Amen, not going forward, amen, not passing from uh, elementary school to middle school, amen, How did that go from middle school to high school, not graduating from high school and going on to college, hallelujah, amen, still in the kindergarten, playroom, finger painting, playing with blocks, hallelujah, amen, and when God said, I would that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper, when God says, grow in the grace and the knowledge of the truth, hallelujah, when God says, forgetting those things that are behind me and reaching forward to those things that are before me. I'm pressing toward the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm going forward. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm seeking the reward. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The crown is before me. The cross is behind me. And I'm looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm pressing toward God. I'm seeking him in a sovereign way. I'm seeking God in a mighty way. Hallelujah. I'm following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Everything else is sinking sand. This world, hallelujah, Solomon told me. Uh, hallelujah, David told Solomon, behold, I go the way of all the earth. Hallelujah, all this earth is death. Amen. All this earth is temporal. Hallelujah, I'm going to I'm gonna build my hope on things eternal. I'm going to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah, I'm going to be a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, come with me through hard trials, through tribulations, through persecution. I'm going to be faithful. Because I'm a follower. Yeah. Now I'm a leader. Yes, sir. Back in the day, we used to teach you couldn't be an apostle unless you was a disciple. Man, you know, you're getting a free ticket to 7 Eleven. You can get anything anywhere. Go online, print it out. Yeah. And you start going over the ACB, get the Pope back, and everything you want to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can be what you want to be, whatever you want to be. Amen. That's nothing but the devil himself because we ain't following and learning nothing. Ask Mr. Brown when he like to go back to high school. Ask Kobe. Amen. When he loved and went back to high school and learned some things. How the good God he had shot to teach him some stuff. Amen. Boy, you're too young to be out here with these grown men. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How you out there, amen, and trying to fight the devil with nothing. But a concept and a theory. And an idea. You out here in this world with Satan is running rapid. With nothing to defend yourself with. Won't go to the army, won't go to the armory. 
to get your weapons. Because we won't go through basic training. Yes, that's good. We won't learn the things that we need to learn. I know everything. I can get it for myself. Well, baby, if you can get it for yourself, why did Jesus come here? Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why did he die on the cross for your sin? Why did he say it is sins? Why did the veil rip from top to bottom in the temple? Hallelujah. He died that we may have life and have it more abundant. Hey. All the way around Robin Hood's bomb and brings me to the southern today. I'm saved. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They was on the wrong road doing the wrong thing, but they met the man of God on the road. Hallelujah. 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 I come up here. We were lost. We were baptized unto, amen, repentance, amen, preparing for the forerunner. The runner had run right past me and left and gone and gone ahead of me. And I can't catch up now. Hallelujah. But I can call on the name of the Lord. He said, receive you, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. So now when we have the opportunity, we don't have to have, amen, all the the Kucha Mosque, we don't have all the, amen, the, the paraphernalia of church. All we need is Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, it's Jesus. All oh, is Jesus in my soul. For I am touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole. I might not have theology like you guys have. Hallelujah. I might be telling me to move back, but I know my healing. If I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Y'all already whole. Y'all got y'all. Get out of my way and let me get mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy. Be quiet. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming in town. Don't you bother my Jesus. Oh, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. They tell you you can't come. They tell you you're not worthy. You don't have a pedigree. You don't have the right name. Hallelujah. You didn't go to the school I went to. Hallelujah. But that's all right. You went to the school of John. But you just met Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when Jesus come all sick, the power is broken. When Jesus shows up, hallelujah, when God is in the building, hallelujah, how the sin seek are saved, how to be set free, we're delivered, hallelujah, by the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time. I said all that to say this. Teacher said, never say all that to say this, just say this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say all that to say this. Beyond man's conception, understanding, wisdoms, and failures, amen, hallelujah, we have to build a relationship with Christ. We as the church, and preachers and leaders, have been standing here and presenting you Jesus like this. This is Christ. We hold our arms open, and we say, come to Jesus. There's only one problem with that. You're not Jesus. Hallelujah. When we should have been doing this, point them to Jesus. Hallelujah. And let them see Jesus for themselves. And build their personal relationship. Because if their relationship is based on you, you might be John. Yeah. God. And they held and they held in a, a, a memorial for you. I had a pastor friend and said, you know. Hallelujah, amen. He was pastor of the church, and, and, and they held up the previous pastor in high esteem to the extent that they wouldn't let him do anything. He can't get any any policy, he can't pass it, because the bishop so-and-so did it this way, and he's gone to be with the Lord. I said, Pastor, I said, when was his birthday? I said, I think his birthday, I said, I would have a grave sight vision. At the bishop's gravesite, we go to the bishop's grave and honoring him at his grave. Right. We're going to have candles, everybody that want to say something. Mother, you want to say something? That was your husband. You want to say something, mother? Go ahead and say it. Mm. And so let them all talk and give the, the, the praise to this bishop that's gone on to be with the Lord. Yeah. And I said, you do the final prayer after they all finish. And I said, I will pray over and thank the bishop for all the things that he's done. And all those believers that work with him, amen, and everything that he has done. Hallelujah, amen. I would pray, I would, I would give God praise for the bishop, amen, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And what I would tell them, I've got to cut my phone, y'all forgive me. Hallelujah, I would tell them, all of you that want to follow bishop, stay here. All of you that want to move forward, let's go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. It's good while you're here, but you can't live on a dead man's religion. That's right. Amen. Amen. You're right, Doc. That's right. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, amen, that Jesus commanded them in the first chapter of Acts that they do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait till they endow with power from on high. For John, oh God, thank you, hallelujah, truly baptized in water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hallelujah, thank you. In other words, they followed Jesus. They seen him do miracles. They seen signs and wonders. They experienced Jesus Christ himself. The ministry of Jesus Christ himself. But yet that wasn't enough. Seen him walk on water, heal the sick, raise the dead. But yet that wasn't enough. Disciples, you're not done yet. You're not finished learning yet. Stay here. I know you're des despised by your Jewish families. Mm. You, don't, you can't even go home anymore. You live in the other room. You live there because you have nowhere else to go. You stand there at the church. But wait there because the promise hasn't come yet. Amen. What's greater than you? Where else can we go? Well, you have the worst of eternal life. Ah, baby, let me tell you something. Hallelujah. You got something coming. Hallelujah. You thought it was good walking with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got something. Oh God, thank you. You got something good coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall receive power after. Hallelujah. You see the power. You experience power. Thank you. Hallelujah. The power. But you want to have yes. power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And don't stop there. You're going to be witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the other little parts of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You will take this thing, Lord. It's going to go viral. Hallelujah. It's going to go worldwide. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they was in one place and with one accord. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Hallelujah. There came a sound. Hallelujah. Jesus had been talking, but it wasn't like that sound. Hallelujah. People popped and talking, but it wasn't like that sound. Hallelujah. He said, Barabbas or oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. It wasn't that sound. Hallelujah. It was burned. They said, crucify him. Hallelujah. It wasn't that sound. There came a sound as a mighty rushing wind. And they filled the house where they were dwelling. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they, they appeared to them clothed in tongues of fire. And they began to speak in other tongues. Ah, as the Spirit of God gave others. Hallelujah. And the partners and all the boys is outside. Hallelujah. They said, we hear them talking in, in, in the language where we was born. That's not saying you just speak in Italian. You speak in North Italy. Hallelujah. You speak in my, in my neighborhood. Hallelujah. How we talking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And not only that, you give him praise unto God. You give him God praise. In other words, you're telling me that I ought to give God praise. The Holy Ghost had come. Hallelujah. That's the thing that was equal to all of them. It didn't say they were praying. It didn't say they were fasting. It didn't say they was in sackcloth and ashes. It said they was in one place. Hallelujah. With one accord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Salvation's not coming. Hope reign the word. Agape. Salvation itself is not coming until we get in one place and with one accord. When we work together, he said, when there are two or three gathered together, being in a smaller church, you get so tired of getting that scripture, despise that small beginnings, and where there are two or three gathered together, you all going to hear that about 600 times. Hallelujah. In my name, there, I will be in the midst, but it still makes it true. Don't despise your beginnings. Jesus had 12. And one of them was, he didn't say act like, yep. he didn't say a representative of, yeah. he said one of you is the dumb. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, so don't, don't worry about, amen, the road ahead. Receive salvation. Receive Christ and share Christ. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I'm saved, preach. I don't know what to do. Hallelujah. The Lord saved me. 
He delivered me. Hallelujah. He set me free at 15 years old. Hallelujah. I was doing what 15 year olds do. Hallelujah. Act is simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I went to a meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. And something got a hold of me. Hallelujah. The year before, the preacher came in. And about 12 of the young people got the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was mad. I had a righteous indignation. How are you going to get the Holy Ghost? And I don't have it. Hallelujah. And one of the preachers said it's for you too. Hallelujah. If you just receive it. Amen. So the next year, he came back. Hallelujah. And I went to that altar. I went right to the altar. I said, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm tearing that altar. I said, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the deacons on there say, Thank you, Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They get on high. Hallelujah. They get their praise on. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. I say, Okay, you said my head's working on my work. I mean, I say what you told me to say. And you get excited all that. You know, where am I at? Y'all getting y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Thank you, Jesus. I say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. They got the praise of God. Love the Lord said, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm like, What in the world's going on here? I'm not getting nothing. Hallelujah, I'm just a parrot. I'm a parakeet. Hallelujah, just repeating what you say. Hallelujah, I'm experiencing for myself. Hallelujah, that's why I always got to give honor. Amen to the elder, uh, Preacher Williams. Amen, because he pulled me off the altar. He knew what other people don't do. Hallelujah, amen. He pulled me off the altar, pulled me up to the front seat. And said, let me tell you something, young man. This ain't nothing between you and Jesus. Amen. You got to talk to Jesus for yourself. Ain't got nothing to do with nobody else around here. They get it for themselves. You need to get it for you. Hallelujah. Because you need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Down on the inside of your soul. Now go back up there and talk to your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I went back up there and got on my oh God. Thank you. I got on my knees. Hallelujah. I started calling on the name of Jesus. And the more they say, say thank you, Jesus. I said, Jesus. They say, hallelujah. I said, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, Jesus. Jesus. I stopped calling on his holy name. Hallelujah. After a while, I couldn't hear them no more. Hallelujah. Thank you. And a big scroll rolled up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there was a split screen. It was hell on one side. Hallelujah. And heaven and Jesus on the cross on the other side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I started reaching for the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the more I reached for the cross, hallelujah, I started losing myself. Next thing I know, I was up in the floor somewhere. Hallelujah. Giving God praise, honor, and glory. And other than that, my pastor had talked about it. Hallelujah. My mama told me I needed to get it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But now I can say, I'm saved. Hallelujah. By his power divine. Saved. My life is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. Hallelujah. By the power of God. Hallelujah. You need the power of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said in Corinthians, we're walking in the wisdom of man. And you see that in the 19th chapter. You see it all through the Bible. Yeah. The, the Jewish followers, one of the, the Greek, the, the Gentile followers, to follow Jesus in, according to the Jewish custom, be circumcised. Amen. Uh, worship on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. They come to me with the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Y'all worshiping on the wrong day. Hallelujah. 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 Paul told them, amen, receive everybody that want to come to Christ. Whatever day they eat, whatever day they worship on. Hallelujah. Amen. New moon. Whether they eat wheat or whether they eat swine or not. Bring them in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let whosoever will, let them come. Let them drink of the water of life free. Yeah. I'm saved. Let us all stand. Amen. I'm saved. I'm saved. Salvation is God's purpose for Israel. He saved Israel to save all the other nations. He sent his Holy Ghost to save us from our sins so we could go ye therefore to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so others might receive salvation. You can hear a million messages and messages are being preached every Sunday and every Saturday and pretty much every day of the week. But who's receiving Christ himself? Are we following John up on the open coast? Or are we following Christ, the deliverer? He is a disciple. He is the man of God. Absolutely. Follow the leadership. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For the powers of, that be are ordained of God. So whoever is resistant to powers, resist the ordinance that God has set up. You're resisting divine order. Hallelujah. Young men, white, children, everybody else. When you resist leadership, you're resisting God. 
I'm not saying that because his name is Elder Williams. I'm saying that because he's pastor. Who do men say that I am? Jeremiah's one of the prophets. Who do you say that I am? Because it don't matter what they say. It's what you say. Thou art the Messiah. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. What you call me is who he'll be. Take it for somebody to know. What you call him, that's what he'll be. God has called him. God has prepared this work. He's prepared this place. What are we going to do with it? We're going to blame it on him. We're going to blame it on money. We're going to blame it on location. We're going to blame it on all these different things. Or we're going to roll up our sleeves and get to work. And put in everything, every effort that we have. Not to help a building. Not to help a person or persons. Or to be, or, but to build the kingdom of God. Because yeah. God's not going to charge you for what you couldn't do. He's he going to charge you for what you could and did. I gave you every tool for success. But yet you use situations and problems as obstacles to the power of God. Yeah. There's, a, there's a need for hope in this world. There's a need for a regular word in this world. And it's time for the Christian community to come together under that hope and under that word of God. And I've been knowing this young man for a while. And I know he has a word from God for his people. But it's not his, I'm going to say it now. Can I say it? It's, the seats are not his responsibility. They're not his responsibility. It's his responsibility to prepare the bread, to show bread. It's his responsibility to study and prepare himself to give you what thus saith the Lord. To be that John of now, we are John's, because we're preparing for the return of Christ. We're preparing this world for this, his return. The Bible says he sent his preachers, his, his disciples out before him as he went into a new city. Oh, in Mark it said, amen, when he came into Jerusalem, his disciples began to praise him. And when his ministers, it said, began to praise him, everybody else began to praise him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Father, we ask your blessings upon your people. We ask you to bless this church as we, Lord God, hallelujah, have been invited here and we're thankful for the invitation. But God, why are we here? We pray for this pastor. We pray for this first lady, this first family, all the workers, all the laborers. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Yet Arlington is in Arlington. We are in all of them. Yesterday is gone. And it can't be returned anymore. Bishop Baldwin's legacy is his. And we're grateful to it, and we're grateful for it. Love him and miss him. In the name of Jesus. But now we go forward in your name. Bless this man. Every word been preached, every lesson has been learned, he's been taught, and now it's his time to stand up. Give him this pastoral sword so he can stand in the gap and defend the members of this church and defend the sheep, Lord God. And defend the ministry. He don't have to defend the call because he didn't call himself. He don't have to defend the pastor because he didn't make himself a pastor. You did the work. It is you that has made him and not himself. Bless him. Bless the church. Bless the ministry. Lord, I send him some Joshua, some her, some laborers. For him. Not just members. Not just church folks. Not just seat fillers. But people ready to come in here to sing, to worship, to praise and magnify your holy name. Yes. Some preachers in here not to tear down the church, not to wait to preach, but to help delivering and healing people's bodies and saving souls. Send him some labors, Lord God. 
some people from this community, Lord God. Yeah. I live around the street, around the, we've been waiting for a church. We've been looking for somewhere to go. Our old church is too far away. And we found somewhere close by. Every avenue, every vehicle that you place here in this community, open up the window of heaven, pour out a blessing. He don't have room enough to receive. Bless his work. Bless the work of his hands, God. In the name of Jesus. Move, touch, and deliver by the power of your holy word. Say you already lost. You should have caught him back in the day. Hallelujah. He's come too far. This family's come too far. And bring this family together because his trial is their trial. His struggle is their struggle. And Lord God, help him, Lord God, to not only meet the needs of the ministry, because God, as Solomon built the temple, he also built his house. And when he finished the temple, he was able to finish his house. So as this temple is being built, build the house of the way of the family, Lord God. The sons, Lord God, the children, Lord God. And Lord God, let them not miss anything and not miss their father and their mother and, and family time in the name of Jesus and all their endeavors as he support them in their football and all the things that they do. Lord God, hallelujah, help them to so support this ministry and the work that's going on here because it's not just for a trophy. It's for a crown of glory. And this is for the saving of souls. Their friends, invite their friends out. Hallelujah, amen, in the name of Jesus. And build this work for the people have a mind to work. These are all blessed we ask in Jesus Christ in my prayer. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together and give God praise. Amen. I'm saying, y'all, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invite you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.